for joining us today. This is Trish with Badass Branding and today's Badass Branding Presents show. We are going to be talking to James Shaw. He is the president and founder of Resist Attack. It's a nonprofit with their mission of providing a pepper spray for every woman in America. We're going to be talking about uh, how he got the ideas for his mission. And uh, first we're going to be talking about some really scary statistics uh, about rape and assault and uh, things that affect women in uh, not only just Austin, Texas and the U.S. So thank you James for joining us today. Thank you very much Trish. So tell us a little bit of your background first. Okay so I'm obviously English, came into the United States in 98 and uh, we've been running an e-commerce website selling self-defense tools for a couple of years and uh, last summer we, we had a number of things happened that made me want to start this nonprofit. So first of all, we took my daughter around a whole bunch of colleges. She was looking to see which college to pick. So uh, when I went on campus, there was thousands of girls away from home for the first time. And I noticed that they, you know, just looked, you know, unsafe, you know, like they needed some protection. So we were thinking about how we could help. And then uh, July the 4th weekend, I found this book, Start Something That Matters by Blake McCoskey, which was the Tom Shoes guy. And in it, he describes how he gives away a pair of shoes for everyone that's been bought. So it's how you merge e-commerce with philanthropy. And it just gave me that idea that weekend that maybe we should start doing the same thing. So mm -hmm. we started off with the idea that we would give away a pepper spray for everyone that was bought, much along his lines. But it really wasn't enough. We don't sell that much from our e-commerce store, to be honest. So I wanted to kind of ramp things up a bit. So. Mm -hmm. In the end, we just decided to spend all of our profits on giving away pepper sprays because it was fun and it, it was a good thing to do, right? So we went to uh, a jogging trail on uh, Town Lake mm -hmm. and we just went there with 50 pepper sprays to test if women actually wanted pepper sprays because it was a bit of a worry to me. I wasn't really sure if people would say, you're crazy or you know they'd appreciate it. So we went there and uh, it was my wife and the kids and we all just wore t-shirts saying we're going to give away a free pepper spray and we approached people and uh, we gave them a pepper spray and they, everybody was enthusiastic, everybody loved the idea. Um, there was like maybe two or three older women that had their husbands with them that didn't really understand and thought we were trying to sell something. Right. But you know most of the people were really enthusiastic so that gave us a bit of a lift and, uh, and it all went from there. So um, we just decided to, to start ramping up more and more, giving away more and more pepper sprays. And then the non-profit idea has happened fairly recently in the last six months. Right. We started finding that we couldn't get into some areas without being a non-profit. Mm -hmm. Universities wouldn't speak to us officially. You know, we had to be invited onto campus by women's groups. Even though you were giving away? Even though it was completely free, no catch, no obligation. We never mm -hmm. never tried to sell anything. Right. They, they wouldn't associate with a for-profit business. And you obviously can't get grants as a, as a for-profit business. And uh, there's a whole bunch of things like Google grants, uh, you know, non-profit related things. Mm -hmm. Actually, they say non-profit, but they really mean tax exempt. It's a, it's a bit of a something I've learned over the last few months is that everybody says non-profit, mm -hmm. but you can create a non-profit company really simply. And it's, you know, a very short form and it's a couple of minutes work and it's like a $40 fee or something. Mm -hmm. And you have a non-profit corporation, but really the tax exemption is what everybody's really talking about. It's the 501c3. Okay. And that's a 70 page and, form yes. and a month of work and, <laughs> and crossing a, your fingers. A lot of work and then three months <laughs> waiting, right? right? So yeah, it's been a it's a been a fun last year. So you mentioned about the reaction of women kind of being they were enthusiastic about receiving it. Right. Uh, what hurdles have you come across with this process? It's a it's a common theme that if we do a street event where we just We've been up to Guadeloupe, for, for example, and just given away on the street. Because mm -hmm. sometimes I just have this urge, we haven't had a giveaway for very long. So we have to go out and, uh, and just do something, you know. So I'll just take a box out onto the street mm -hmm. and give them away. Right. Uh, just, just to take pictures and, 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 you know, interact with women. So um, it's a common theme that the older women aren't, aren't interested. You know, you mm -hmm. get a lot of people that put their hands up because you think yeah. you're about to sell them something. Right. 
But every woman that's, you know, certainly college age and, you know, maybe up to 30, 40, they're all mm -hmm. very enthusiastic and they appreciate it. I mean, mm -hmm. we've had no one say, why would I want a pepper spray? Everyone mm -hmm. understands the need for them, right? Right. So show us your package, what you give away. Okay, so we give away these. Um, they come vacuum packed and we have our postcard on the back. Mm -hmm. And it just describes who we are and what we do. And, and on the back of it, it, it describes why we're doing it and some instructions on how to use it. Mm -hmm. So if they have any questions on how to use it, they can always right. look they, at the back or they can give you a call or send you an email. Exactly, yeah. We have a Facebook page mm -hmm. at Resist Attack and we're on Twitter and we have a, obviously our website resistattack.com. Now I know there's different types of pepper spray and this is the 10%. So that's the, right. anything less than that is of course effective but just not as much. Right, so you know there's a lot of uh, talk about strengths on the websites and of course most people are e-commerce and trying to sell you these things so you can only believe half of what you say you know here on these websites because they they have a you know an ulterior motive of trying to sell you things so mm -hmm. we actually sell you know probably close to 200 different types of pepper spray different sizes and shapes and strengths mm -hmm. and brands obviously mace is the common is the you know well known one mm -hmm. and everyone thinks of mace like they think of Hoover and vacuum cleaners, do you know what I mean? Like right. one of those names, but you know, Mace is just a brand. We sell these at Pepper Shot. And we literally chose these because they're small and they're on your key ring. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, it's no, there's better ones, bigger ones, um, st stronger, that reach further and all of this sort of stuff. But if you're not gonna carry it in your hand, it's pointless. Exactly. You know, you can have ones that are a pound in weight and that go on a belt clip, but you know, unless you're a security officer, no one's <laughs> going to take those things. So, absolutely, we sell these, uh, we'll give away and sell these, but we uh, they're just small and sit on your keyring, mm -hmm. and they're in your hand the whole time. That's the whole point. And you're also going to be providing various uh, classes, uh, other self defense for not just using the pepper spray, but I think you also even have tasers and other items like that that you. Yeah, our e-commerce store is still actually running and online, and we just give percentage of the profits to the non-profit directly. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, you know, there's no point in closing it down. We'll just start funding the non-profit with that site. Mm -hmm. So if you go to resistattack.com, there's the shop area where we have, I don't know, upwards of 2,000 SKUs. Mm -hmm. And we sell everything from pepper sprays, tasers, stun guns, batons, surveillance equipment. Mm -hmm. You know, you can buy full house camera systems and alarms and all sorts of things, personal right. alarms even. But we're focusing on this just because it's such an easy, cheap way of getting women's attention and focus, right? Really, it's only one part of what we really do. But it's, and it's it, what gets them in the door. It, exactly, know, right? Your, your it, everyone understands item. why we're doing what we're doing, mm -hmm. but it's part of a bigger picture where we, you know, this is just one layer of protection. We have education and seminars, self-defense seminars, and we have a lot of uh, material online. We have 400 articles that we've had written online and we're just building up uh, you know a system of different layers of protection that's what I always talk about this is it's not really just the pepper spray it's the fact that you have it in your hand will make you more aware of your surroundings you know when you see this when you pull your keys out of your bag and you're walking to the car you will immediately think oh I need to be looking around me there's I need a reason to be... why you have that in your hand right so. it, it just reminds you and, and just, you know, it could be empty. It almost is as effective empty, right? Because it, you're automatically thinking, should I look between the cars as I go down the parking lot? Right. I, am I looking over my shoulder? Am I looking alert? I'm not texting. And so, you know, I've, I've read many times that police have said that if you're just alert with your head up and you're looking around, you're a lot less likely to be attacked. Right, because you don't look as vulnerable. Exactly. They're yeah. looking for people that are distracted, they're not paying attention, and you know, um, nervous looking, right? So if you're confident, you're walking confidently and looking around, you're a lot less likely to be attacked anyway. Absolutely. And it, like I said, some of the statistics that I was looking at earlier, um, this is from Safe Place here in Austin, and it said in 2011, 816 rapes and sexual assaults were reported, but they're saying that between 20 and 40 percent of actual cases reported. So that could mean up to 2,000 to 4,000 rapes. Yeah. Yeah, it's a common theme that a lot of people say that very few are actually reported. A lot mm -hmm. of people keep them to themselves, especially at college. College-age girls just 
think it's one of those things that happens and, and don't report it. Right. They feel like it's their fault in Absolutely. some way. Absolutely. I mean, yes. You know, movies and society sometimes makes them not want to, you know, reveal it. You mm -hmm. know? Absolutely. And that's and that's something, that, I mean, contact your, your doctor and find out if something like this has happened to you. Um, one rape occurred every hour in Texas. You know, and some of the other statistics that I was looking up, every two minutes someone in the United States is assaulted. Yep. Every two minutes. And one in eight adult women in Texas has been raped sometime in her life. So to think that it doesn't happen to you or that it can't happen to you, that's, that's, that's going to get you in trouble. <laughs> I'm not trying to, you know, make people kind of scared and say I'm trying to do scare tactics, but this is, this is statistic. This is what's out there. Um, and it doesn't happen to just women. Right, you know, absolutely. some statistics, you know, I could list here, and if anybody wants to know this information, uh, email me. But um, men, uh, boys, you know, in all ages, of course, uh, they say the ages 12 to 34 at the highest risk. So that's why you're wanting to get into the college age kids, right? right. Well, you know, the earlier we can teach people about staying aware mm -hmm. and education, you know, the better it will be. It will last them forever. Absolutely. Um, yeah, some of these statistics were just... Um, stomach churning you know it was it's sad you know very sad that this is out there and that your uh, mission is necessary but we appreciate people like you that does do want to make that difference yeah, it's just one thing you know there's many ways of, of approaching the problem and there's plenty of organizations that are teaching boys before they're men how to treat women mm -hmm. right and that's absolutely necessary too you know a lot of people say that this isn't a very aggressive response to the problem but you know, there's plenty of other people that are doing it other ways. This is just a way that we can, you know, tangibly approach, you know right. what I mean? And, uh, you know, I've often said if we've just saved one woman from being raped, right. then it's all it's worthwhile, all worth right? Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. So how many have you given away so far? 4,000 so far today. Okay, and that's from what time, how long? Well, we started, I had the idea July the 4th, 2011. Okay. We uh, did some work on the website and kind of detailed what we were really going to do and so it probably started around August 2011. Mm -hmm. We gave away I think maybe three or four hundred in, in the rest of that year so it started off really slowly and we mm -hmm. were trying to find out how we approached women's groups or even found them and and how we were going to fund it and all of that sort mm -hmm. of thing so that was 2011 then and um, uh, I don't know if you remember but Esme Barrera was a young lady in in Austin that got killed on New Year's Day right in the early hours and that um, I went around the neighborhood and was dropping off pepper sprays on the doorsteps in their neighborhood and uh, it just turned into a kind of a firestorm of media attention everybody was really stunned by this one tragic event right mm -hmm. so we managed to get into a lot of groups quite quickly during January because of that, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, it just raised awareness. It's all about awareness, right? But most people try not to think about it and don't think about it, but you know, by seeing us or hearing about our, our um, non-profit, then they, they at least think about it. And mm -hmm. then uh, you know, maybe they won't walk from the gym to their car in the dark, or they'll wait, wait for a friend. Or right. they'll, you know, a lot of people I know that work for companies like Target, they're actually um, not allowed to go back to their car on their own. Mm -hmm. their, their employers say you have to go in pairs at least. Mm -hmm. So that sort of thing helps, you know. Absolutely. And we actually go into them and uh, we're not allowed to post um, posters on their community boards, but we can post them in their restrooms, you know, break rooms rather. Right. Uh -huh. And uh, so a lot of the women that work in places like that can get a purpose spray. So that'd be a way for maybe a employer to contact you and say that you he wants you oh, to come absolutely. in and do a presentation and provide it for his right. For his so employees. obviously funding is a big thing for us. It's one of the problems we haven't fixed yet. Right. Um, so one of the one of my first ideas was to have a, a giveaway pack, and anyone can go onto our website and they can buy a, a giveaway pack from ten to a thousand pepper sprays, and they they buy them at cost and they come like this with a postcard on and uh, they're just $3 each, which is a lot cheaper than you can buy them from like Academy and stuff. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, and they come with um, all of the materials that you need. Um, say you were giving a, a, doing a giveaway yourself, uh, you know, at a church event or a women's group or even a book club, you know, wh whatever you're gonna do. Um, 
it will have uh, materials that you can put out on the tables, um, posters that you can use to publicise, all of those sorts of things, and also some educational materials to give away to the women there. So that all comes in the giveaway pack, mm -hmm. and it just allows us to spread the mission, you know, without us, it costing us any money, basically. Mm -hmm. It's just support from the public. So we've had people that just literally found out about us online and have gone and just bought a 10 pepper spray giveaway pack online and we ship it to them and they've given it to their friends and family. Okay. So anyone can do that um, and a lot of people are picking up that option and it just allows us to you know, spread wider, faster. Right. And they're and not, obviously they're not just in Austin, they're all over the country. Sure. People sure. in California you know, found out about it and have just been buying giveaway packs. And this is okay to ship to California? Absolutely, yeah. They're 50 state um, safe okay. and legal. Uh, the only place we're not allowed to sell e-commerce wise is places like New York. We have a full list. I mean, you're not actually allowed to, our shopping cart will stop you buying from anywhere that it's illegal. Okay. Right? But uh, our non-profit pepper sprays, our giveaway pepper sprays, we can ship anywhere because we're not selling them, right? Okay. Yeah. So, so it's got a little bit of a catch. It's kind of different, right? Of, you know, e-commerce versus non-profit charity. Mm -hmm. And uh, you'd know, be surprised how many, we've had women that have just thought this is a good idea and they have a local group that they're a member of, you know, can we do something? And I said, absolutely, you, you know, this is how you do it. Mm -hmm. And they just buy it and they, you know, s spend some time with me on the phone about how to approach this and all the education. Mm -hmm. And it works out well. So how important is education into this? It's, it's, it's very important. This is, we're really using the pepper spray as a as a way of grabbing people's attention. Mm -hmm. You know, the the mission statement is to give a, a free pepper spray to every woman in America, right? Which mm -hmm. is uh, huge. I mean, there's 158 million women in America, so that's a that's a big. Some might say impossible project, but you know, you only need to get one big brand behind it, or you know. Get, get the media's attention in a nice way and, right. and it could certainly be possible. Absolutely, absolutely. So what are your plans then to scale your mission? So we, we've, uh, the nonprofit was started in May but we only got our 501c3 um, end of July. Mm -hmm. So we're pretty new at the, at the real nonprofit mission. Mm -hmm. So I've been building the, uh, the board of directors. We now have four directors and each brings their own thing to the table. Mm -hmm. You know, event planning, uh, fundraising, lots of non-profit uh, experience. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping in the, you know, by the end of the year we'll have some real fundraising programs in place okay. and we can start uh, talking to bigger corporations and, and getting grants. Right, and then you're gonna have more of a um, scheduled workshop and, and training and things like that as well when, when that gets Right, so we, we've had, we had one recently, a self-defense class, mm -hmm. and we usually partner with martial arts groups and clubs. Um, you know, they provide the people and the location and we help promote, and we do obviously do the pepper spray and mm -hmm. talk about all education at the events. Right. Um, we just have to find all of those. We even had one in, in, uh, in partnership with a concealed handgun license mm -hmm. uh, place. So that was good, that was way back in, probably January or February this year. So we just need to find these people, approach them, talk to them, and real, you know, make them realize that it's a, it's a good thing for both, both organizations. Right, so if you had one big major hurdle to jump over right now, what would it be? What's your major thing that's, I guess, funding? It always probably. comes down to funding, unfortunately. <laughs> I mean, we can do this, right, and we can probably give away 10,000 a year just by limping along mm -hmm. with funds, you know, that we raise ourselves. But the more people that spread the word, and I'm really excited about the giveaway packs, but that's really only one step. That's, the, that's like approaching the public. Right. And then we can approach corporations as well on top of that and get more money quicker. Mm -hmm. And then there's just general promotion, you know, we, we have very few Facebook followers, right? So I hear that if you get to 5,000 Facebook followers, it's kind of a magic number that it starts snowballing at that point, you know what I mean? So it's all about promotion and you know, badass branding is part <laughs> of it, right? So right. just letting people understand why you're doing what you're doing. And mm -hmm. there's so many people out there clamoring for your attention, you know this, right? So it's uh, every little thing helps. Right, well that's why I wanted to be involved in this because I know that with, a project like this, it does take 
a community. And so to have as many people as the ripple effect, right. you know, two people that know two people that know two people can yeah. help get that word out, mm -hmm. you know, and you never know who's going to be the one person that's going to have your magic bullet, per se, to, exactly. to come and, and make everything just, you know, explode from there. So It's like in customer service. I read an article the other day about uh, some, a, a company was helping a, a awkward customer on the phone and they went over the top with their response, you know, mm -hmm. and they went out of their way to be super helpful. It turned out that this guy was the CEO of another company and it turned into a huge deal. And it all starts from very small things, you know what I mean? I always think that, you know, I, I'm going to give a pepper spray away one day to someone who's in Coke or, you know what I mean, a big, a big brand, right? And that will make the difference and suddenly we'll be able to be giving away hundreds of thousands of pepper sprays in a right. year, do you know what I mean? Right. So if one person was to contact you and <laughs> say, how can I help? What do you tell them? Oh, it, again, it depends on the person. If it's a, you know, a, a normal woman that can just have buy a pepper spray for ten of her friends, right? Mm -hmm. That really starts the ball rolling, like you say, because then one of one or two of her friends might have that idea. Well, I can do it for ten of my friends, right? Mm -hmm. And it all just takes off from there. It really doesn't take much, and if you know, you only need a few people to pay it forward, right? And then it really takes off. So when you were developing this mission. Um, like I said, you had your e-commerce site, mm -hmm. and so that was, was there any other um, happened, any other event that happened that kind of pushed this along, that it's like this was what you really needed to do? No, I think, you know, I'd started the selling self-defense products partly because I've always been interested in um, stopping women from being hurt. Mm -hmm. right? It's one of those recurring themes, you know, I've never liked that situation I've never liked seeing women being hit or mm -hmm. you know emotionally abused and all that sort of stuff right. but um, it's only really until recently that it's kind of gelled into you know focusing on that and and doing it for free mm -hmm. and you know raising funds so I think it's kind of always been at the back of my mind it's mm -hmm. just becoming more focused nowadays you know right and you have one daughter and we have two daughters. Yeah, two daughters. Yeah, one just went okay. into college, and that was really the That was the, the catapult. I, mean, if, I don't know if you've ever been on a college campus, but you'll see thousands of girls that look a little bit lost because it's like their first day there. Right. And it's orientation, and they don't really know what to do, and they're so vulnerable. But they don't think they are necessarily right there, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, when we're young, we think we're invincible. Right, but they're, you know, this is probably the first time they've lived away from home. Mm -hmm. They haven't got their support group around them. They're in strange surroundings right I often say there's actually quite a few groups that are um, that are at risk I was talking to realtors last year and uh, they're an incredibly dangerous situation that no one really thinks about because a lot of them are women mm -hmm. they meet strangers in empty houses basically right. I mean that that could go so wrong and I've heard some stories uh, a few months back there was a a woman called a realtor that was called to meet a guy at a house and she just felt wrong didn't go and uh, called the authorities and when the police went to the house they found that one of the back rooms had been set up with all sorts of equipment that they were she was going to be trapped basically mm. and attacked so when you hear stories like that you know she dodged that bullet right right but that's the sort of thing that's that can be scary right they're yes, out there these people yeah and that's amazing that she did trust her intuition exactly. I mean, they say women's right. intuition is strong and you know if you have women's intuition yeah don't discount it you know, because sometimes not. hers saved her life probably they, they they're actually quite good realtors get training mm -hmm. um, and they have some good tips like you know always let the people go in the rooms first mm -hmm. so you're closest to the door always follow through the house the people don't let you know this whole women first thing is a, it can be dangerous right because you right. don't want to be inside the room when they're in the doorway so um, there's that and there's things like realtors now always insist on meeting clients at the office mm -hmm. for so everybody sees them and everybody knows who they're meeting mm -hmm. and it you know dis it discourages the the bad guys if you like from from starting this right there's more witnesses right you know so what other tips do you have for women? Um, like we mentioned, Target says don't go out to your car after dark by yourself. Um, the holiday season's coming. Right. 
and it's so, going to be dark, right? And it's going to be dark. You yeah. know, and that's when I first met you was after that Lakeline Mall event in the middle of the day. It was like on a Sunday afternoon or something. Right. It was like 5 o'clock on a Sunday afternoon. Yeah. So it doesn't mean after dark is, of course, some statistics will show that, of course, those statistics, you know, the rates go up. But what are some other tips that you would have for women when they leave the mall? Yeah, well, the, the obvious thing is just to be aware. Mm -hmm. um, make sure you're looking around. You're, you're not you know, focused on something else. You're not mm -hmm. texting and you're, you're looking around and, and watching where you're going. Mm -hmm. um, it, if you can be with someone else, obviously, that's much better. Mm -hmm. Even if you're following a stranger, you know, multiple women going out to their cars at once, you know. Right. Um, especially when you're thinking about in the, in the parking garages, you know, when you're getting into an elevator, you have no idea where you, what you're getting out into. Do you know right. what I mean? Right, I mean, right. I would always recommend parking in the open space mm -hmm. when under the lights and, you know, when the street lights park under one, right? Mm -hmm. And I think it's important to, like you said, be aware, walk around your car, mm -hmm. you know, because you never know if someone's going to be over on that other side and you're getting into this side and there's someone waiting for you to unlock the door and they can sneak in right. the back seat on this. And there's yeah, the, stories that... The cars have got better actually a lot recently. I mean, back in the, in the 80s and 90s, cars would be unlocked if you were driving them, right? So people mm -hmm. would just jump in at a traffic light. Whereas nowadays, most cars, you get hit 20 miles an hour, they all they lock, lock up, right? right? And when you walk up to them, only the driver's door unlocks. Exactly. So everything's getting better and, the, you know, circumstances of carjackings, I think, must have gone down because mm -hmm. of these things. Right. We actually sell a, a triple pack of, uh, of this pepper spray. It contains a key ring, but it also contains one that goes on your car visor has a little clip that clips on the car visor. Okay. And then there's an even bigger one, which is like a three ounce pepper spray has a sticky back to it so you can stick it on uh, by the front door or by your bed mm -hmm. so it's just one of those things that you know it has the house covered the car covered and then when you're walking out and about covered you know mm -hmm. so if you're jogging you can use this if you're um, walking the dog or you know just out and about on your car keys right i have wasp spray if i might my <laughs> right. That yeah. and my 45. <laughs> right. I've heard stories about the wasp spray before, yeah, about, you know, the problem is you, no one really knows how effective it is. I mean, obviously it's not going to be fun, but the, the, this is specially formulated to do things that wasp spray may not do, right? right. So, you know, you'd, you just spray it generally in their face area and it gets into their nose and eyes. Mm -hmm. It affects the mucous membranes and it basically just closes everything up, your yeah. eyes and nose will just start running incessantly mm -hmm. it and it burns it stings like a mother right yeah. i mean it is a nasty feeling and, and you uh, can't wash it off no <laughs> you add water and that's just adding yeah it's gas to the flame exactly pretty much, right so. so you know it's going to affect someone seriously for 45 minutes but there's no after effects so at the same time you can you know it's not like you're shooting someone and people might hesitate because mm -hmm. of that you know do i really want to do this kind of thing this there's no lasting effects so. right and so let's say if a woman, heaven forbid, they have to use this, mm -hmm. what do you suggest they do after that? Do they call 911? Do they run as far as they can? Absolutely. I mean, give them, give them some yep. suggestions on that. So no matter how much you dislike the person that's attacked you, the idea is not to attack them back, right? You're going to get yourself into trouble. So th this is just a way of getting away. Buys you some time. Absolutely, mm -hmm. right. So you want to be spraying at their face. This These last you know, eight to ten sprays, one second bursts, and they'll go about eight feet. Okay. Uh, and you have to be aware that there's some risk of blowback, right? You're not going to be getting it as bad as they're getting it, but you have to understand that you're going to feel the effects. Um, you know, it's unlikely you'll be using it indoors necessarily, but you have to think about wind and all right. of that when you're outside. So once you've sprayed it at someone, immediately you just run like hell in the opposite direction, mm -hmm. make as much noise as you can, scream, shout, Whatever I've heard people say that you should be screaming fire rather than anything else. Because, right, people you know, want to come out and watch a fire. Right, you know. or they're scared of that for their their own houses and stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, there's some bad stories about people not helping women getting attacked, and it, you know, I've even read where the more people that watch, the less the chance that you'll be helped are. It's something like you know, some psychological thing about other people will assume you're going to help and not them. Right, right? so. But well, like the one at Lakeline, he said that 
people were just kind of there in shock. They didn't, they, it was like, this is really happening right here in front of us. Yeah. And they just, nothing happened. I, I mean, think they, we're they, naturally they, reserved, right? So a lot of people will think, I don't want to get involved. And, you know, is it the husband and wife? Is it something, a family matter that I shouldn't get involved in, right? I mean, right. they just don't know. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, personally, I would, I would be all over that, right? I would be jumping in no matter if it is a I'd much rather apologize saying, oh, sorry, Absolutely. than, you know. I would always encourage people to, to get involved mm -hmm. rather than, you know, stand back. Mm -hmm. Worst case, just call 911, right? Do whatever right. you want to do. Everyone has it's a phone with them nowadays. Better so. to explain, you know, and apologize afterwards than, you know, than exactly. do nothing. Exactly. Just think of it's your daughter or wife, right? I mean, I always think that whenever I see any of these news articles, if that was my daughter, it would be, I would feel completely differently about it, right? I sure. Think. Absolutely. So. Do you think you would have had the same mission, the same idea if you'd had sons? <laughs> I don't know. I, actually, I, I mean, I've, like I say, I've always thought this and I've always been really disturbed by movies. I remember one movie in particular, which was... Um, what was that woman in Silence of the Lambs? Oh. Jodie Foster? Right, uh-huh. She did a, a movie called The Accused, I think it was yes, called, uh -huh. in a bar, where mm -hmm. she was raped in a bar in front of other men, and they were all cheering her on and stuff. Mm -hmm. That that movie really affected me. I didn't like that movie at all, right? I, at that point, I just realized this, this, this was a bad thing, right? And right. I needed to try and fix it. So, you know, all of these things that have been going on have kind of led to where we are today. Mm -hmm. And I'm just pleased that we're doing something. I, it's better to do something than nothing at all, right? Oh, exactly, exactly. So tell us how people get in touch with you. Okay, so it's uh, resistattack.com, just as it sounds, or facebook.com slash resistattack. Or you can call our 800 number, 800-375-0911. We thought the 911 would allow people to, to remember it better. Mm -hmm. uh, you can tweet Twitter at tweet at us, <laughs> at Resist Attack. Um, how else are the, email? I think that's it. Email, yeah, james at resistattack.com is me, or you can uh, send to info at resistattack.com. Well, fantastic. Thank you so much for Thank sharing for us with uh, your information and how you got this started. And like I said, if people want some of these statistics, they are scary. I said this one information I got was from safeplace.org. The PDF, very well done. I always suggest you take a look at this and share with your community and maybe with your employer and saying, here's something that we need to be aware of and maybe this will help them decide that this is something that James can come in and provide them some more education and materials so that, uh, like I said, just if there's just one woman that this helps, then it's all definitely worth it. So Great, and everyone should you. buy, spend 30 bucks and buy 10 pepper sprays for their friends and family. That's right. Best Christmas present you can do. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.